my daughter had brought the dog home and didn't tell me. I got home to this dog fighting with my other dog. How old is your daughter? 18. She was 18 at the time. Why did she bring a dog home without telling you? I can't even imagine my children doing that. This is the plaintiff, Carla. She says she paid to have a Siberian Husky neutered for the defendant, and the woman won't pay her. The woman gave her a phony telephone number. She tracked her down and is now suing her for the $420 she's owed. This is the defendant, Amanda Johnson. She says the plaintiff was going to adopt the Siberian Husky her daughter came home with one day, but said it was illegal to do so unless the dog was neutered. The plaintiff said she would neuter the dog. She did, and now she's trying to turn around and get her to pay for it? No way. She's accused of causing a doggy dilemma. All parties, please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Million in our forum, the People's Court. Yes. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Million is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, yes. Ms. Carla and Siberian Husky Rescue of Tucson, uh, you are suing Amanda Johnson for $420 that you say she owes you and refuses to pay. Tell me how you first came in contact with Ms. Johnson. From my Facebook page uh, that I have a Siberian Husky Rescue of Tucson. All right. How long have you had Siberian? Are there a lot of Siberian Huskies that need rescuing in Tucson? Unfortunately, yes. Okay. So how long have you had that rescue going? Since 1969. Oh, goodness. Okay. So she goes on Facebook, she sees your organization, and she contacts you and says what? She said that her daughter brought the Husky home and then the daughter went on vacation and left the dog with her and she couldn't keep it. And it was outside in a kennel. Because the dog didn't get along with her home. dogs, correct? Yes. And outside in a kennel, this, this phone call happens in July of 2021. And okay. how hot is it outside in July in Tucson? A hundred degrees plus. Okay. So um, what discussions do you have with the defendant about what to do? I told her to send me pictures of the dog and some information, and I would advertise the dog and find it a home. But I also told her that the law is for rescues that the dog had to be neutered and up to date on all shots before I could place it. And she okay. agreed. She said the dog had shots but was not neutered. And then what was the discussion after that regarding neutering? She said she was a single mother and she couldn't afford to have the dog neutered. And, and, it, and she agreed. I said, well, if I have it done, would you pay me? And she agreed to pay me $50 out of each paycheck if I, if I if had fronted it done. the money so that she could get the dog a home. Okay. And yes. then what happens? You advertise the dog. I advertise the dog on my Facebook page and a lady named Linda who has adopted from me four times in the past called me and said she was interested in the dog. And because I knew Linda, uh, gave her Amanda's information and said, "Go, you go and call her yourself and, and ask her the questions. I bet you regret said. that now, don't you? Yes. Because Ms. Johnson, according to you, you didn't adopt the dog through Ms. Carla, and therefore you don't have to honor anything you said to her, right? Correct. And I just want to first say I respect Carla very much. She's taken a lot of dogs into her home and does great. I have a lot of animals myself. Uh, my daughter had brought the dog home and didn't tell me. I got home to 
this dog fighting with my other dog. How old is your daughter? 18. She was 18 at the time. Why did she bring a dog home 18. without telling you? I can't even imagine my children yeah. doing that. They, I, mean. I told her, you know, what are you going to do with this dog, Matney? And luckily I have my sons, uh, my ex-in-laws live right across the way from us. They had a kennel outside underneath a tree. They said, Matney, you can keep the dog there for a little while, but for a little while, you've got to come over, you got to feed it, you got to water it and do all these things to it. And so she agreed that she would do that. But and she did it. Did she? You did it. Right. No, she exactly. didn't. She didn't. And I work. Listen, so as my I mother, started. as my mother used to say to me all the time, my revenge is that you have three daughters just like you. That's what my mother oh, would say absolutely. to me. I was a really good kid. I don't know why she would be so mean, but uh, they'll right? have theirs. They'll have theirs. Here's the thing. So the dog's outside. It's obviously a terrible situation. You know it is. You know how right. hot it can get. And it's a husk. Absolutely. And so you're panicking and you reach out to Ms. Carla and you do make a deal with Ms. Carla, don't you? That you will reimburse for the cost of the neutering. I did $50. She said, can you chip into her neutering? Can okay. Chip into Show me the text where you say she says that, that way. I think it's like number one. Okay. Now you bring my attention, Ms. Johnson, to uh, some text that you submitted where Ms. Carla tells you, I think I have a home for Blue. It would be a great home. They have adopted from me in the past. She's referring to Linda, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. So but can you, so it's that you yes. would never, Linda would not have called you if Carla had not have, call, have given Linda your number. Can you bring Blue into Tucson? Can you chip into his neutering fee? So you ask her to chip in, not pay for all of it, Ms. Carla. And then she answers, this is on July 4th. That would be wonderful. I will definitely call you tomorrow. I don't have a lot of extra money being a single mom, but could definitely help with some, possibly $50. So according to her, the original agreement, the agreement is $50. Now, you think that it's to pay for all of the neutering. Why do you say that? And you actually said, Ms. Carla, that it was $50 from each paycheck. Why did you say that? I didn't say it was $50 from each paycheck. She said that in many text messages. Okay. Uh, okay. So according to you, the agreement changes later to she's going to pay for the entire neutering little by little. Yes. So she says that in a text message to you. Many text messages. Okay. Let's look at the text messages that you have introduced. I get paid on Friday, so I will send you $50. Then I can pay you $50 a paycheck till it's paid off. If that's okay. I said that after she sent me the bill, I did say that. So then why didn't you? So when I, because when I got the bill, I was like, I was a little suspicious of the bill and she didn't have the neutering done yet. She, she told me it's going to be about this much. She had well, the, neutering the neutering got done, yet. right? You know, it did it. get done. Okay. So and so the neutering got done and blue had a lot of problems, right? Miss Carla, the dog, uh, had no house training. It peed all over her house. It wasn't getting along with her other dogs. It was matted and filthy. So does Linda still have blue? Yes. But she's yes, she having challenges still? Yes. So you suspected that Ms. Johnson's daughter didn't just find the dog. You suspected there was more to it, and you, you felt like you weren't being dealt with honestly, correct? Yes. Because actually what happens is that you accidentally sent to Ms. Johnston a text that you meant to send to Linda. And in the text, you say, nobody took care of him. He was just left to fend for himself. All they did was put out some food and water, if that. For some reason, she doesn't want us to talk to the daughter. So she is trying to get some information. The daughter must have lied to her. Getting information from them is like pulling teeth. I don't think you meant to send her that because you're talking about her and her daughter. And then she gets a little angry and she texts you, for some reason, you sent me the text that you sent someone else talking crap about my daughter and I. And I will not put up with the rude text message on a dog I was just trying to help. So is this when I'll pay you $50 with every paycheck until we're done, all of a sudden become, I'm not gonna pay you squat? Yes. No, actually, she showed up at my work. Well, that was later. That's after you ghosted her. Wait a second. She's still no, no. trying. No, she shows up at your work because you stop answering her calls and texts. So here's yeah. the thing. You drive 
Ms. Carla, because I love this part. Ms. Carla, you drive over to where she works, because you know she works in Benson. And what do you do? Well, I waited to talk to her. for I was there for over two hours, and that was... That was it until she came out and talked to me. And when she talked to you, what did she say to you? She gave me a piece of paper with a different phone number on it. And when I tried that phone number later on, uh, a man answered the phone and said it wasn't her phone. Whose number did you give her? It was my house phone. (laughs) My phone had... Bell, I had okay, really Ms. Johnson, it, tell crack. me why, you, if at a minimum you promised $50, and at a maximum, yeah. according to your own texts, you promised to pay off the entire neutering cost. Tell me why you haven't paid a penny. The, when I went to talk to her, the last I had heard from her, I got a, I got a note in the, in the mail saying I was being sued. No, it but you, no, no, day. stop, stop. You're being sued now, months later. But all those other times when she kept, let's look at what Linda says. Let's see what Linda says. Because you say, I didn't deal with her. I didn't do it through her. So I don't have to abide by any of that agreement because I adopted the dog directly through Linda. Let's see what Linda says about that. I received a message through Carla's Facebook feed about Blue, that he had been dumped and was in a bad situation. I called her, she said she'd been talking to the mother of the girl who brought him home, that's Amanda Johnson. I said, I might be interested in the dog, but only after he's neutered. So Linda seems to think that you did go through Carla. The text seemed to indicate, you know, that you have promised all the way around, including way after Linda takes over and takes the problem out of your hands that has now become Linda's problem. Uh, You're still promising that you're gonna pay and you're promising you're gonna pay the whole thing. So I'm going to order you most definitely to pay the neutering costs of $170. But you're also suing for two things, a rehoming fee, which no one ever agreed to pay for, because you only get what it is that was promised to you. And then the gas to Benson is really my favorite part of this story. The trip to Benson is my favorite part. The fact that you're suing for the gas to Benson is awesome, but that's also not compensable. That's a choice that you made to go ahead and go to Benson. Um, which I applaud. I think it's great, but um, because you will not be denied, and I love that. Uh, But you, Ms. Johnson, I do kind of agree with Ms. Carla that you ought to be a little bit ashamed of yourself. I understand that your daughter did it to you, but I kind of see where she gets it because you're doing it to her. Yes, at the beginning, you may have said chip in, but yes, as we all know, when the rubber hit the road and the desperation was setting in and things had to happen quickly, you agreed to pay for the neutering. I find in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $170 plus prejudgment statutory interest since the time you were supposed to pay it in July plus her court costs. Good luck, folks. So the plaintiff does indeed prevail for the neutering costs, the $170 plus court costs, et cetera. Uh, Ms. Johnson, the judge thinks you should be embarrassed uh, about over yourself. What do you think? Well, I it was more or less when she came and sat at my work, what she forgot to say is when people, they asked her to leave, she just said she wasn't going to leave. So after that, I felt like I shouldn't have to pay her because that's harassment. <laughs> Well, you know, you're totally wrong. It has nothing to do with this issue. Nothing to do with it. You promised to pay it. Right, and exactly. The judge says you got to pay it. So you do have to pay yeah. it. Okay. All right, uh, Ms. Carla, you, you went to great lengths to, uh, to get this money back. Has it been worth it to you? Yes, it is. And uh, I'm very happy that I'm getting the $170. All right, good luck. And uh, listen, continue continue working for this organization. The, the rescue organization is over 50 years old, and you're still involved, still helping out. I own the organization. I'm the president of it, and I've been doing this work in Alaska and in Tucson for 55 years. Well, good for you. Good for you. Congratulations, and keep it going. Doug, we've talked about this before. Text messages are critical in disputes like this. Send a text stating your position. At least it shows that in the throes of the dispute, here's what you felt, here's what you believed, and it will help you when you're in court. Why do judges wear black? Judges wear black robes 
in the courtroom. We all know that now. Because it's slimming. <laughs> <laughs> it's very flattering. It's flattering. <laughs> but uh, supposedly, it's because John Marshall, who was the fourth Supreme Court Chief Justice, um, wore a black robe to his investiture that it kind of became a big tradition. Well, what, what color were people wearing before? They wore all different colors. Oh, really? You know, blue ones, scarlet. Um, in, in England, which where we borrowed everything from, they wear ermine, anything, you know, any, any kind of uh, colors. And the whole idea is there's this sameness and blandness about the outfit as well, as if you're supposed to like check your, your personality and your personal opinions at the door. You know, like you do, right? <laughs> it's a Remember, som- when you did have to bite your tongue? Remember when you did have to bite your tongue when you were on the bench? Yeah, I never really did that well. <laughs> you no. weren't that good at that? No, I wasn't good at biting my <laughs> oh, tongue. I can't imagine why not. This is the plaintiff, Diana Hall. She says her 20-year-old granddaughter owes her money and won't pay her back. Granddaughter or not, she works and needs to pay her back the $1,450 she loaned her. And unfortunately, she has no choice but to sue. This is the defendant, Yatia Edwards. She says she wishes her grandmother never offered to help her out of a financial jam she found herself in. Because now their relationship is totally strained. She has no idea why her grandmother's trying to sue her for money she doesn't owe. But it's a free country. She's accused of causing her granny to be grumpy. All parties, please hit your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff loaned her granddaughter money and says the ungrateful granddaughter stiffed her. She wants the money back. But the defendant says her grandmother gave the money to her to help her out on rent for a few months and is now trying to turn that gift into a loan. And that's just not fair. It's the case of grumpy granny. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Hall, you are suing your granddaughter. For money you say she owes you and refuses to repay. Talk to me. What happened here? Well, my granddaughter, Yatia, called me and told me that she was in a situation where she had been apparently scammed and she needed money to pay her bills. And I asked her what the situation was and we came up with the solution that, you know, I was going to loan her the money. The, uh, it was like $3,200 to start with. I said, well, I give you a 90-day continuous plan, and you pay me $400 a month. I give you the $3,200. I will attach your rent to my operating account because I'm the guarantor on her lease anyway, which is $600 a month. I had my son to deliver her $1,450, and I attached the rent to my account and pulled one month out of the account so you loaned her the fourteen fifty in cash, and another six hundred was withdrawn from your account for a total of two thousand fifty dollars. Correct? That's correct, Your Honor. And she was still paying the bills like she wanted to, and not adhering to the agreement that we had came. How was she not adhering to the agreement? Because she was supposed to pay me back four hundred dollars a month, Your Honor. And what did she and do? Gatia gave me the first initial payment was two hundred dollars. And when I talked to her about it, she said that's all she had to give. Okay. And I didn't hear from her no more for three weeks. And when I called her back again to find out what was going on with the payment and why was it $200 instead of the $400, Yatia said she was paying her bills <laughs> and that she was not going to be able to pay me because she cannot pay me and stay afloat with her own bills. You are a bill. I am a bee. Right. What's going on, <laughs> Yatia? I'm helping my granddaughter out, Your Honor, because that is my granddaughter. That'll and teach you. I love her. That'll teach you. All right, Yatia, what's going on? So like she said, you know, I did call her and ask her for a loan. Um, we kind of went through a whole battle before we even agreed to what we agreed to. She agreed to pay three months of the rent and three months of my car. She did have my uncle give me the cash, um, and she paid the first month. But... The second week, I took a phlebotomy class. And when I took the phlebotomy class, my mom relayed the message to her that I took the phlebotomy class because I was still going. You know, she gave me the money. I was doing what I was doing. I paid her the first payment of 200 and then I was going to pay her another payment of 200 in two weeks. 
the two weeks hadn't passed and you she called me that second week. And we had some words back and forth. She got upset because I took the phlebotomy class and told me to figure out how to pay my rent on my own. So, well, know, she said, wasn't okay. she wasn't upset that you took the phlebotomy class. She was upset that you were using the payment of the class as a reason to not stick to the plan that you guys had no, worked no, no. out. That you wasn't the case. I was going to pay her the other 200 in two weeks, which it still would have been but within the month. Did you pay it? Minimum. Did you pay the other 200 within the two weeks or did you pay it later? No, I paid it within the two weeks. I paid her 600 in total. I paid 400 the first month and then that was July and then of August, uh, I paid 200. And Ms. Hall, you agree she paid you back $600, correct? That's correct, Your Honor. So go ahead, Yatia. And then I never got to the second payment of 200 because I was just giving what I could give because I am just drowning, basically. Um, after that, we had a conversation about it. I said, okay, so whatever what's she really, wants. So what, what is your defense? My defense is she reneged on the agreement after paying the first month's rent and giving me the money. She got upset and then it changed everything. And then from there, it just escalated. It was like- How did she change the agreement? After. You mean because she didn't continue to pay your rent? Right, because the agreement <laughs> So was, then you don't have to pay her anything because she didn't loan you more? That wasn't the, she- It sounds awful when I say it, right? Because September passed and October passed and you haven't paid her a penny. And now you have no grandma. Now you have no relationship with your grandma, right? It's just a mess. And I, yeah. you I, felt slighted that she wasn't happy for you that you were taking this class, right? I did. I mean, if she wasn't happy, then you know it is what it is. But I took the class. I know I took the class to get a better job so that I could get more money so it would be easier for me to pay the bills and pay her back. I know you feel she's your grandmother, she should want you to do that, but timing's everything, right? Like if you already made a commitment to pay a certain amount, you, you then send this text to her. You may not know, but lately my financial situation has deteriorated greatly. I know that we may not be on the best of terms, but I wanted to text you to inform you that there is no way possible that I can continue to pay you and keep myself afloat. I have come to a difficult decision knowing the heat that will put on me. I can't pay you until I'm a completely out of my financial bind. You're not even telling her I need a week. You're telling her I'm not paying you. And then this causes a problem okay. between you and your mother as well, right? Yes. Ms. Uh, Edwards. Is. Yeah. So is your mother talking to you? No, she's and, not. And your grandmama's not talking to you. So even though it's laudable that you're taking classes to be able to get a better job, maybe you have to wait for what you want until you're out of the woods, as opposed to adding more cost to things. I don't know. Either way, Ms. Edwards, the bottom line is I'm not hearing a defense other than I'm drowning, which I feel bad for you that you're drowning, but I still have to issue a judgment in favor of your grandmother because the only question in court is, do you owe it or don't you owe it? It's never, can you pay it? That comes later when a, a judgment is being enforced. Can I just say something though to you guys? Yes. Have you had a good relationship with your granddaughter all of your life? Yes, I've had a good relationship with Yatia all along. Your Honor, I gave Yatia messages that, you know, you're my oldest granddaughter. And there's no denying about that. Yatia is up in her feelings, don't want to pay back, money don't grow on trees. Can I ask you a question? Do you miss your grandmother? I do not. Really, really? Really, really. Okay. I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $1,450. Yeah, it's okay. Y'all too got a bad attitude toward everybody That's anyway. Well, this is a relationship that really is disintegrating right before our eyes here. The plaintiff has prevailed. The defendant, who says she doesn't have the money, uh, is going to have to pay her grandmother $1,450. Ms. Edwards, you just told the judge you really, you don't miss your grandmother at all. Re Do you feel that way? It's over? Yes. Um, It's when, I didn't really get to tell the full story, but it's went way further than it should have went. Um, and yeah, that's kind of all I got to say about it. All right. Well, that's all interesting. Right. All right, Ms. Hall, you just heard your granddaughter. How do you respond to that? Yatia is has a bad attitude with all the adults in her family when things don't go her way. I don't, if she don't miss me, I don't miss her. She's one of 12. 
I got 11 more to focus on, not one that's disrespectful. Well, that'll bring this case to a close. You are going to get the money. She's got a judgment against her, Ms. Hall. She's going to have to pay up sooner or later. So you have won here I in know the that's People's right. Court. Doug, I have to tell you that there are situations where you just don't want to sue a family member because it's going to ruin a relationship. However, if a family member loans, borrows money from you and then just thumbs his or her nose at you and shows no respect, I'm not exactly sure why you should be cautious or scared about filing a lawsuit to get back what is owed you. Do you and Judge John cook together? What is your favorite thing to make? We do cook together. Um, you are a good cook. I'm not much of a cook. No, that's not true. You've gotten a lot better uh, since the kids left. No. I know my limitations. I'm my specialties are prepping, chopping stuff, and cleaning up. Busting suds. I'm yes, good. I'm you do. Good You're a good suds, suds buster. You but, are. Uh, yeah, but you've you, gotten better at cooking. And yeah. we mostly try to cook healthy stuff. You know, right. I mean, I love Cuban food, obviously, right. but um, what we try to to cook healthy stuff, which is not Cuban food, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But um, we try to to stay low carb ish right. yeah. and lean meat ish right right for the most part I, yeah. I look my my specialty is something you can cook in one pan because it's really easy right so one pan yeah i don't like that so much when but. i when i was a kid my father used to make this stuff he called slum gullion it was just like a bunch of crap he threw it it's whatever pan. was about to go bad oh in the God, fridge yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, you put it all in there and the, the flavor, the juices swap around and all of a sudden you got something that's not halfway bad. This is the plaintiff, Robert Kupferberg. He says he hired the defendant's housekeeping service to clean his house for seven years. But the last time they were there, they shattered his sliding glass shower door. His worker was quite shaken up when he found her there crying, covered in bits of glass. The defendants said they'd pay for a new door and the installation, but they haven't. And he's here suing them for the $1,306.50 he's owed. These are the defendants, Mark and Celia Napoli. Celia says, for seven years, the plaintiff has told them to be careful with the glass shower door because it wasn't on the track properly. They don't owe the plaintiff all this money, and quite frankly, he should be happy they aren't coming after him for damages, because their employee could have been killed due to his negligence. They're accused of shattering a relationship. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. The plaintiff hired the defendant's cleaning service and says that one of the guy's workers shattered the bathroom shower door and he wants his money for that door to replace it. But the defendant says the door was broken and flimsy and their worker could have been killed by the thing. Oh, and money? No way. It's the case of you're all wet. Thank you, Douglas. You are welcome. Okay, Mr. Kupferberg, you are suing Mark Napoli and Cecilia Napoli doing business as Cecilia Napoli Cleaning Service for $1,306 that you have had to pay to replace a shower door that according to you, uh, one of their employees broke negligently. Tell me what happened. I hired the cleaning service to clean my house, it consisted of three cleaning people. I've been using them for a number of years. How uh, many on, years? Uh, approximately seven years. Okay. Um, on July 22nd of 2021, uh, one of the cleaning people was in my bathroom cleaning. The other two people were downstairs cleaning. And I hear a loud, loud crash. I, I had no idea what happened. I jumped right up out of my bed. I was watching television and I went into the bathroom and there was glass everywhere, all over the floor, all over the counter, on the carpet. And right away I said to the girl who was cleaning, are you okay? And she didn't really answer me. She was in a little bit of shock. But I offered to clean her up. She had little shards of glass on her, on her head, on her clothes. And one of the workers downstairs, his name was Juan. He is the son of the owners. He came up and he said, oh, my God. And we started to clean the glass. We took the girl out. She said, I'm okay. 
And I then proceeded to clean up all the glass with this fellow Juan. And that took probably a half hour. Did you ever find out and how the glass broke? No. Were you able to communicate with the woman who was cleaning that shower? I could not because she didn't speak English okay. that well. I was concerned with the girl. There was glass everywhere. Is she an adult? Because she she's out. a woman. If she's an adult, she's not a girl. She's she a woman. She is a woman. She was a woman. She was an old. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Napoli, you folks were not present when this happened, right? Correct. Correct. How did this happen? Did you ever talk to the employee? Yes, she's a, a witness and she's standing by. Oh, okay. So let's talk to her. Yeah. Let's hear it. Can, can I tell you something? Sure. First, um, when that happened, my son called me right away and he said, um, we have a problem here. Nuri, um, somehow the shower door got broken and she's bleeding. And I say, call 911. Do, does she need to go to the hospital? And she goes, he goes, no, he doesn't, she doesn't, but she's bleeding. So um, I can hear uh, Mr. Robert talking to somebody, I presume was the wife, because she, he said, I don't know what to do. This lady, stupid girl, broke the door. And she, he went ballistic. He called her a stupid girl? Oh, not only that, he called names. Idiot, get out of my house. I don't want to see you here. All right, so how did it break? What did she tell you? She said he cleaned it, she cleaned he it once. He said that and he told, um, Mr. Robert told her to clean the bottom side of that door. Every time... Once in a while, he would say, be careful with the door because uh, the door is, is loose when uh, you slide it. On the track. In the track. She did what he said. She was cleaning it, and then she turns around. Somehow, that's, she will explain better because I wasn't there. All right, let's hear from her. Does she speak English? No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Well, it's a good thing I speak Spanish. <laughs> that was handy, <laughs> wasn't it? Okay. ¿Cómo usted se llama? What is your name? Nuria Griselda Montoya Sandoval. Okay, I'm not going to repeat that. I think everybody <laughs> got it. Okay. ¿Y qué fue lo que pasó? What was it that happened? Oh, a mí siempre me ha tocado limpiar este, el has baño. It's always been my job to clean the bathroom. Entonces, yo lo estaba la, limpiando I ya de, de afuera. On the outside part la, already? Entonces, la puerta se cayó. And y then... Me cayó en, en, en la cabeza. Oh, un, me minuto, un, minuto, un minuto, un minuto, un minuto, un minuto. And then the door fell. It fell on my head. I want. Eso es cristal. ¿Cómo fue que se cayó el cristal o se cayó la puerta? What happened? Did the door come down or did the glass come down? O oh, la puerta. The, o sea, toda la, la puerta. The entire door, door. All of the door came down. Okay. Do you have pictures from that day, Mr. Kufferberg? I do. I submitted them yeah, to give evidence. Me, yeah. Give me one second here. May I also state... They've cleaned my house for nearly seven years. Never had a problem with these showers. Did doors. you ever mention? I, did you ever mention on previous occasions that to be gentle with the shower doors because they they tend to come off the um, track? Never. They don't come off the track. I've never had a problem. I don't know how she did it. It was an Le voy accident. A una, I don't stop know. talking. Le voy a hacer una pregunta. I'm going to ask you a question. Usted le hizo algo a la puerta para que se cayera, para que se cayera. Did you do something to the door that made it come down? No. 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 What's your theory on how this happened, Mr. Kufferberg, that would be the cleaner's fault? That she pushed too hard? What do you think? So will the defendant have to pay for the shattered shower door, or was the door just wonky? Let's go back into the courtroom and find out. I think that they're installed on rollers. There's rollers on a track, uh, and they roll back and forth. They're bypassing glass doors. I think she just pushed it too hard when she was cleaning. She put too much pressure on the glass. But hasn't she, she pushed, cleaned at your house for years? Like this particular individual. They, they do have different people. They're not always the same people who come. I'm going to ask the, the her. The sun a, comes. Cu ¿Cuántas veces usted ha estado allí limpiando esa casa? How many times have you been there cleaning that house? No le puedo decir cuánto, pero hey, ya hay I can't tell you how many, but veces. many. No, but por un año, por dos años, por unos meses, for one year, for two years, oh, for a few months. Por algunos años, un año quizás. Maybe a, a year. Entonces cuando la puerta me cayó encima, el señor se puso a ofenderme. And then when the door fell on me, the man got very insulting. ¿Cómo es que lo ofendió? 
y eh, yo estaba llorando porque yo estaba nerviosa porque yo soy bien nerviosa. I was very nervous. I'm a very nervous no, person. No I was crying and he was calling me stupid. Jo that is not true. Okay. Uh, let me hear. Gracias. Let me hear from uh, the owners of the company. Mrs. Napoli. I don't know if it is. Obviously, we broke the door, right? So I told her that I'm willing to pay for that door. The wife called me and told me that she uh, have someone that is going to give him an estimate. It's about $800. So I said to her, okay, it is fair that we, I pay for one door and you pay for the other one. So she But was, why would she have to pay uh, for the other one? She didn't break a door and need to, you know, you need the two doors to match. That's what always happens. And then you need to pay somebody to install it, too. Um, I realize that the doors have been there for many years, and normally in court, you take the depreciated value of the object, but that's only if there's a market for the object. Like, you know what I mean? Like, in other words, the only reason he has to pay anything is because the door broke. Um, I don't know if he was a complete jerk the way uh, is being described or not. You know, obviously that would really bother me if it's true, but it doesn't have a bearing on the case. I have to figure out You know, were the doors broken during cleaning? And you tell me, obviously, she broke the door. And I don't know. Maybe she just pushed too hard or something. All right. Let me see the receipt for this. Okay. So I have proof that he, in fact, did pay $500 and then $806. So based on the evidence that's presented, um, you know, it seems to me that it is fair to ask that you pay the $1,306.50, no matter how rude or impolite. Um, you feel and she feels he was uh, when it happened. $1,306.50, verdict for Mr. Kufferberg. So after weighing all the testimony, the, the judge has found in favor of the plaintiff for the $1,306 he was seeking. Uh, Mr. Ms. Napoli, what do you, how do you feel about this? It, it makes sense that she separated the the vulgarity and the nastiness of the individual with the, the actual issue. Um, we offered uh, $400. We never got paid for that cleaning day either. It's interesting that you didn't get paid for cleaning that day. Uh, Mr. Kuffelberg, how about that? D do you feel that uh, you were kind of being a little nasty by not even paying them for them to s their service that day or not? Uh, I don't believe I was nasty. I just want my house clean. I'm glad this is behind me, and um, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. I'm, I'm satisfied. Thank you. All right. Well, that'll bring this case to a close. Doug, by the way, if the plaintiff had been standing there and got injured when the defendant did this, the plaintiff could get medical bills, and it could end up costing the defendant more than the actual cost of the job. That's what happens when somebody's negligent. I watch your show every day. The problem I have is that the windows were leaking in my apartment and it took the landlord over a year to come in and fix them. It's now been three weeks and the job is still not done. What can I do? Well, as a tenant, you uh, if you are living with that kind of situation where it makes it uninhabitable or it's causing damage to your stuff. Right. It's causing mold, mold right. is the big worry I would have, moisture that could be damaging your things. You would be within your rights to withhold the rent and make the repair yourself. Right. Yeah, and this whole, well, it's been a year and they haven't come in, you wanna make sure if you're the tenant that you've got this written record of it's been a year. Oh, absolutely. The you wanna keep text, text messages, emails, whatever right. it is. You They'll used to have to send a certified letter back in the old days. If it's deniable, but... you never know. The other party's just gonna go, oh, she I just, just they, brought they just that up. me about that, yeah. right. So, right, so but, you can make all the phone calls you want, but you better follow it up with an email or a text when it's business. That's gonna do it today. We will see you next time.